All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome hey. to Tuesday Notary Titans for uh, Tuesday, January 12th, 2021. My name is Bill Soroka. I'm the founder of notarycoach.com and author of the book, Sign and Thrive, How to Make Six Figures as a Mobile Notary and Loan Signing Agent. I'm here with my two fabulous co-hosts, Carol Ray. You know her as the founder of Notary 2 Pro the most uh, highly recognized loan signing certification in the industry. Carol, thank you so much for being here. What's going on today? What are you excited about? <laughs> okay. You know, everybody knows I had a birthday. They know how old I am. Uh, my husband gave me a new scooter that I get around with when we go places. He gave me a beautiful, fancy Cadillac scooter <laughs> so i was very excited we were out yesterday having to run some errands and things and i got to use it for the first time and it was fun so i was excited about that that is awesome and <laughs> you guys need to post some pictures of that because i would love to see it okay awesome all right and our second fabulous co-host laura Buer from coachmelaura.com she is a one-on-one -on -one coach when it comes to loan signings everything specialty notary work, plus creator of the Laura Buer Presents Library. Laura, how's it going today? You look bundled up. I am because it's cold. It's crispy. <laughs> I'm telling you. It was really cold out there. It was really cold overnight too. So I've got my heaviest, uh, whatever you call these muffler things, uh, to stay warm. Uh, and today I'm excited because tomorrow is a special anniversary for me. Tomorrow uh, will be my 17 year anniversary of becoming a notary uh, and at your service mobile notary. Thank you. And so uh, just for those who are new and think, can I do this for a long time? The answer is yes. And it can get better. My business is better in these last few years than it ever has been. And that's what sustainability is all about. Yeah. Wow. I'd love to hear that, Laura. Congratulations. And thank you. Uh, thank you for being an inspiration and reaching back and helping so many notaries uh, create uh, their dream business as well. Guys, that's what's really amazing about this. If we enjoy this business, we should do everything we can to make sure that our business lasts in uh, thriving economies and in the downtimes too. That is what sustainability is all about. I love and that. We'll have both. <laughs> Over the course of time, I've experienced both sides for all of it. And uh, I think that when you're diversified and, and you look at expanding what you know and what you can do, you can survive it all yeah. and thrive, not just survive. People need a good or people need a good notary in good times and in bad. And I think That's you're right. a, a great demonstration of that. Thank you. You bet. And uh, for me, guys, uh, I'm excited this week. I have lots of calls and interviews and all kinds of cool stuff coming up this week. Tomorrow, uh, if you, those of you who know, I also wrote how to super or supercharge your notary business with LinkedIn. I co-wrote that with Sandra Long. She's got an online course about how to take your LinkedIn uh, presence to a whole new level. And for those who are part of her course, we're doing an ask me anything call. We do them every single month. So if you want two experts at your disposal once a month, boosting your LinkedIn presence. You want to check that out. I'm going to post the link inside the chat window so you can get the details on her online course and maybe join us tomorrow if you're down for that. And guys, we are, uh, one thing that we are instituting maybe a little bit more of here on uh, Tuesday Notary Titans is having guest speakers that are experts in their own field uh, with their own niche, or they have a different perspective that they can share with us. Today is the first day that we have our, our guest for 2021. And that is Judy Lawrence, founder of the Lawrence Institute for Notaries. And she has established herself with a great reputation as the queen of apostille or apostille. And she is our special guest today. We're gonna go right into a, a brief presentation from her for about 10 minutes before we dive into the questions because we know that notaries are always looking for additional streams of revenue or just additional uh, education to help them be of better service. So Judy, if you can you unmute and can we see your face? Will you have a camera? Oh, there she is. Hello. 
Don't forget to unmute there. Hey, Judy. Hi. I'm good. Hi, Laura. How are you? Um, <laughs> good hi, everyone. You. And thanks to Bill for um, asking me, allowing me to be here. Um, Apostilles, I know I don't have a lot of time. And as many of you know, I love to talk. So I'm going to try not to do that. Um, I um, Apostilles is a really great business. It's a trending business. It's a a uh, business that um, you can make some additional money. You can increase your revenue stream. Um, I often see on Facebook when I talk about this course, I often see on Facebook where people say, why do I have to take this course? Um, you send your, your, your thing to the Secretary of State with the fee and it comes back and you're all done. And um, that is not exactly right. You have to know what you're sending how you're sending, why you're sending, do you need an original, or do you need it signed by deputies? Uh, yeah. 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 Bill, you just muted yourself. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Judy, can you unmute yourself? You, uh, you got muted there. There we go. Oh, you're muted again. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, I, I, I made a, a list in my mind to tell you about the three, what I think are the three most important benefits that you can get out of no, out of learning to be an apostille agent. One of them is, yeah, it's a trending business and, and you can add it to your, um, your resume and you can add it to your business card um, and you can add it to the services that you offer and um, it's a trending new business. More than that, it brings new people into your orbit. So for me, I don't know how many of you know, but I have a general notary business um, and I have walk-ins all day long. Um, and for me, many times they'll be in here and then they'll see that I have a sign and it says apostles and they'll say to me, oh, I wish I had known you last month. I, I had to have them done. And I say to them, well, that's okay. But you know, next month you come see me and they do. And they wouldn't know me unless they came to me for something else. So you're, you're bringing business and you're bringing people into your orbit. And I think that's really, really important. And of course, the third thing is that you are enhancing your income stream. Um, apostles are not state regulated. Uh, the notary part of it, oh, the notary part of it, yes. But apostles are not state regulated. So you set your fees. Um, you, I, when I teach my course, I will, I will tell you. Um, you know, you've got to see what people around you are doing. You've got to check out the competition. So if you decide you want to be an apostille agent, then you have to find out, like, are three people around the corner from me apostille agents? And if so, what do they charge? And how fast is their service? And what are they doing? And then basically, if it were me and when it was me, I charged a little bit less and I tried to get them done a little quicker. And that's how people started to come to me because I was not, this was not what I was known for. I was known for, I was a signing agent, which I still am, and um, a general notary person. So I, I brought together um, all of the good things that I learned how to do and added this wonderful service and it has worked out really well for me. Awesome, um, Judy, Judy, can I interfere, interject real quick? Okay, we've got a couple of things. Number one, nobody can hear you real well. Can you okay. move closer to the microphone? Sure. sure. Let me see. Is that better? Yeah, and your okay. your camera your your camera is way up here. Can you point it towards you? Okay. Okay. Is that a um, little bit? Let me um let me see if I can do one thing here. Yep. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, it's a little bit better. You might want to raise your voice as well. And the big okay. the, the I'll, big I'll yell a little bit. So, well, uh, Judy, can I'm sorry, can we just interject one more time? I'm so sorry. We are on a call with a couple hundred notaries, but there's not very many that actually know what an apostille is. That was my, my next, what is an apostille? Perfect, all right. That's the next thing that I wanted to share with you, because that is another 
thing that I get asked a lot on Facebook and LinkedIn and other and other social media sites. Well, what exactly what is an apostille agent? And I will tell you that if any of you decide to go into this business, you will you will find out very quickly that many people don't know what it is until they're asked to get one. So their lawyer or their or their doctor or someone says you're going to need this apostle, and then they call you and say, "Tell me what he meant. What is an apostle?" Well, I'm, I obviously can't go into the whole thing, but what I want to say is your job as a notary is basically to notarize the document. Your job is not to verify that everything they say is is true. Your job is not to say, oh yeah, this power of attorney, I mean, we're not allowed to give legal advice. And you're not allowed to tell them, oh, this looks perfect. You're not allowed to do that. They will come to you, especially people who maybe don't understand English so well and come from another country, and they will come to you and say, can you just look at this and tell me if it looks good? No, I can't, because I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not allowed to do that. And if I do that, um, you and I are going to meet on the courthouse steps. You know, we don't want to do that. So your job is basically very similar to what we all do as notaries, which is check out their identification, make sure everything's on the up and up, and make sure the documents are signed correctly. Now, the other side of the coin is there are processes. There are many processes. There are processes for state documents. There are processes for documents that are, and, and we go into this a lot in my course, Hey Countries versus non hey Countries. So um, you're going to have to learn if you want to do this business. Well, if it's a hey country, we do it like this. But if it's a non hey country, we do it like this. Um, and, and I hope that a lot of the people that I've taught have told me that they were really glad I said this. So I want to pass it along. It isn't difficult. It isn't horrible. It isn't where you're going to have to make yourself crazy to learn it. What it is, is I compare it to um, when you were using one word processing program and then they told you, you can't use that anymore. You have to use word, remember? And you, I mean, I'm dating myself. Like they said, you know, you can't use that anymore. You have to use word. And we were all like, what do you mean we have to use word? We love what we do. Well, now you have to learn to use word. If you go in and decide to become an apostille agent, you have to learn the processes and the processes are no different. They are, they, you will, you will learn them. And in the beginning, you will, you will not maybe have to call a mentor or call somebody and say, you know, I'm not really sure about this. <coughs> Excuse me. But once you've done it five, six times, it's like anything else. You'll be like, Oh yeah, I know um, that guy needs a, a, a will he needs a, a power of attorney. You'll get it. It isn't, it, I don't want to make it sound like it is so hard that why would anybody want to do this? Because it isn't. Um, and of course, again, what I want to say, what I want you to know is it is a wonderful way to increase your revenue stream. It is a terrific way to have something on the side that will bring you in an additional bit of money. And I don't think anybody um, you know, would mind that. So um, I will, I will answer any questions that you have. Yeah. Awesome. Judy, thank you so much for giving us kind of an overview of what that uh, industry looks like. Can you just really quickly tell us why somebody would need an apostille? Like what function does it serve? Absolutely. Um, I'll give you like five or six examples. Somebody is adopting a child from another country and in order to get to that country and get that child, they may need to get their um, passport apostille or their birth certificate. Somebody's going to teach in another country, so they may need to get their diplomas um, apostille. Um, somebody needs to um, give a power of attorney to their parent, or their parent needs to give one to them. Um, I'll tell you the, the story that I use in my class. So don't get mad at me if you're going to hear, the, hear it again. And I always say this. 
Now you have a very, very rich uncle in Bulgaria, and he leaves you $40 million. And you just don't feel like traveling to Bulgaria to get that $40 million. So you hire a lawyer in Bulgaria, and you say to that lawyer, uh, sell the property, oh, close the bank accounts, do everything, and send me my $40 million. And the lawyer says, okay, but I need your passport and your birth certificate and your wife's passport and your wife's birth certificate and, and the deed to the property that you want me to sell. And so you get all that together and you send it over to Bulgaria and you get a check for your $40 million. Now, most people tell me when they hear that I would go to Bulgaria, but probably you would not. Um, and so um, let me think more. Um, you might be um, a destination wedding is very popular. Um, so uh, the Dominican Republic is a huge place where people are getting married right now, maybe pre-pandemic, maybe now a little less, but they're still doing it. And so to get married, they need each other's birth certificates, passports, and what is called a single status affidavit. So um, you can provide all that. And um, there are just eons of things that come up that will, uh, your, your power of attorney is one of your most requested documents because um, you are here and your father is there and you want to, he wants to give you power of attorney, you want to give him power of attorney. It's, it, it, it happens all the time. Um, so those are just a few things that, you know, will come up. And um, I do want to say no apostille can ever be used in the United States. So if you get a call and someone says to you, I need an apostille for Texas, you got to you got to say no. Only can be used abroad. Interesting. Awesome. About international. So it's internationally related. It's internationally related. Mm -hmm. And then. Do you think uh, if we just had about 30 more seconds, can you tell people exactly what purpose it serves? Like, why do people need an apostille? What exactly does it do? What does it mean? It means that you've been legalized by the Secretary of State or the Department of State. And it means to people in a foreign country that they have checked who you are, they've seen your identification, they've put a pretty stamp on your document, and it means that they will then give you whatever it is that you need. Adoption, it means that they will process, I have one I'm doing right now for their adopting a baby in China and it's been going on for about a year. And um, they have to get medical certificates and all kinds of things before they're just gonna release a child out of China to come home with them. Awesome. Judy, thank you so much. Guys, I have been posting the uh, link to Judy's uh, training course that she provides on the Abhasti process uh, in the chat window as well. And we'll keep that up. And Judy's going to hang around too. So if we have any um, apostille related questions, she's going to be available to help out with that. Guys, let's move into, Judy, thank you so much for your time and thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, as we uh, move into the regular Q&A session of TNT, uh, this is uh, Q&A style, like a call-in radio show. The best way to for this to work organized is to raise your hand, use the function in Zoom to raise your hand. Uh, depending on the version of Zoom you have, that'll look a couple different ways. One, uh, click the reactions button down below. Uh, all the videos and there will be a raise hand feature or click participants. It'll open up the participant window. You might see raise hand in the lower right hand corner. You might have to select more on your name. Let's yeah. dive in now. Kristen, yeah. thank you for yeah. being here. Yes. Hi. I'm sorry. Could I, could I interject something to uh, have to do with what Judy just talked about? Oh, please. Yeah. Okay. I get this, uh, this question all the time from a lot of my graduates about the apostille work. And what I would like to interject here is that if they live in, especially states like Washington that border Canada, anything that borders New Me Mexico, these are, these are where you really wanna focus that business. Uh, one of my very, very good friends, uh, Laura Vestinen, who you may have 
heard of. She was the queen of apostille work. She lived in Washington and she made huge amounts of money by just working apostille work because she was so close to the border. So I just wanted to add that if, the, if you live in that area, that's something you really want to go after. Thank you so much for doing that, Carol. Laura, did you have anything you wanted to add on apostille as well? I just want to say that that is work. That's one of my specialties. Uh, mostly they've been powers of attorney. Philippines, Mexico are the countries I mostly get. Um, the other thing is that not everything that needs a certification from the Secretary of State is our is um, the notary being apostille or certified. So it may be a document that is signed by a public official and it needs to go in, we're just facilitating it. And they're going to authenticate that that signature does belong to that public official who signed whatever that document is. So sometimes it involves notarization for me, but sometimes it's just a document that needs the service and the customer doesn't know how to get it. And I can be the middle person to help it get to the right place. It doesn't mean I notarized anything. It can be a service all by itself. Awesome clarification, thank you. Uh, and if we do have any questions, we've got obviously got a stellar team here. Laura does it, Carol and I have experience with other notaries that do this. And of course, Judy's on the call with us. Uh, love it. Okay, Kristen, thank you so much for being here. You wanna unmute, tell us what state you're in and how we can help. Kristen, going one, don't forget the unmute part. All right, we'll come back to you, Kristen. Athelonia, always a pleasure to see you here today. What's going on? What state are you in and how can we help? Hi, Bill. Hi, Laura. Hi, Carol. Hi, everyone. I am from Illinois. My name is Athelonia Barksdale. So my question um, this week, I uh, had a question regarding the venue, not the venue on my not notarial certificate. There are affidavits that sometimes have the venue or the state and county at the top of the document. My question to you is, if there is no venue on the notarial certificate, um, if there's no venue indicated on the notarial certificate, which I'm always good with adding the venue there, I oftentimes find when I receive title documents, they don't have the venue, so I have to hand write it in. But um, this week I got tripped up because there was an affidavit uh, where I was signing in a county different than the property county. Right. And so I wasn't sure if I should touch the venue information at the top of the document, if there is no venue indicated at the notarial certificate portion, or if I should never touch the venue at the top of the document and just hand write in my venue right as above my notarial certificate. Laura, what do you think? I think never's not a good word. Never and always uh, don't work <laughs> well in the okay. notary world. I will say that there are states that allow their notary certificate to be interspersed amongst the document. And sometimes it's difficult to know where's my part and where's the document part. Um, my uh, practice is that if the, if the venue is not with my certificate, then I put it there and I don't deal with what's at the top because I consider that document. And that's not my job uh, to put that there. And if I felt that it needed to be filled out because of an issue of blank spaces, I would have the signer do something with that um, instead of me, because again, I'm in the document portion. However, that's not an always statement. There have been documents where um, uh, it needed to be filled out and I did not know what needed to go there, whether it was a property when it's real estate. Do you want the property there or was that my venue and I'm just gonna repeat it down here. And in that case, I call, you know, when in doubt, call that hiring company, call the title company. It's much easier to make the call at the table than it is to have to fix it later. But unfortunately, there's no consistency uh, to be able to say it's always this way. All right. Awesome. Great question, Afalonia. I know those are everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, and thanks, Laura. Uh, Kristen, are you ready for us yet? Kristen, all right, we'll go to Cynthia. Hey, Cynthia, thank you so much for being here. You wanna unmute, tell us what state you're in and how we can help. Hi, I'm in the state of Virginia. Thank you for taking my question. Sure. A question regarding a power of attorney. I have a friend who actually lives in the state of Virginia and her mother who lives in South Carolina wants to give her a power of attorney over her affairs. Would she have to physically travel to South Carolina to complete the paperwork? Awesome question. So um, we're just wondering if she has to travel across state lines just to get the paperwork notarized. Is that correct? All right. Good. It's, the, it's the power of attorney document is for the mom. She's the principal. Yes. Then she's going to be meeting with the notary wherever she lives. Okay. It doesn't have anything to do with the daughter who's being appointed because her signature's likely not the one that's being notarized, it's the principal. So wherever the principal is, that's where the notary is gonna be. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, and that can be in any of the 50 states. Yeah. The person receiving the um, uh, attorney in fact power or receiving the power does not have to sign. Okay, all yeah. right, thank you. Yeah, you bet, great question. Kristen, I'm gonna go back to you one more time. Are you here? All right, I'm going to take your hand down. Yesenia, awesome to see you here. How are you? We want to tell everybody what state you're in and ask your question. I'm in California. And my question is for a fellow new notary, um, only because he's working at the time uh, right now. So he asked me to ask this question on his behalf. All right. So he took his notary exam. He passed, right? Mm. And and this was September 2020, okay? COVID, he's in Southern California, LA County. He finally, finally gets, you know, the documentation for commission in December. He was so excited. I told him, I will drive down and do the oath with you because um, LA County, it's closed. So the notaries apparently down there have to find another notary to give them the oath because they can't do it at the clerk's office in LA County. But then he reads the document further and, he, and it states that it has to be somebody in LA County to provide him the oath, okay? That's correct. So he Googles, finds somebody, right? She sounds very confident, you know, so he, he sets it up. He does it with her, it gets rejected. So now he has to pay additional expenses because um, the state rejected it. He has to get life scans again. And then so he asked me if I knew any notary in, in the LA County that knows how to do this procedure for new notaries, the oath part and completing the um, certificate correctly. What's the best way for him to find somebody, unless somebody here in this group actually knows what they're doing and they're in LA County? Sharon Brake uh, jumped right in. She says she does it. Sharon? Okay. So, Sharon Brake, and yeah, you you have a connection to Sharon, right? In, in Sign and Thrive? I think so. Okay. So I'll, I'll, Sharon, if you could put in the chat your info, I will look it up. And we got a couple of people jumping in there. Yeah, fine. The more the merrier. I'll let him pick. <laughs> I love that. That's what this community is all about, guys. Thank you for jumping right in there and supporting. Yeah, it looks like Brene does it as well. Sharon's phone number's in there. All right, wonderful. Thank you. For thank that. you. Senia, thank you for the teamwork there too and posing your, uh, your associate's uh, question. All right, Tamika. Tamika Merchant, thanks for being here. You want to unmute. Tell us what state you're in and what is your question? Hi, I am in the state of Michigan. And my question is regarding the apostille service. I did a little research regarding that. I am a uh, fairly new notary and I am interested in the apostille service. And the 
Secretary of State or the Great Seal of Michigan stated that the person, the owner of the documents would have to bring it in. So how, if anyone has ever conducted or facilitated an apostille service for someone in Michigan, how, how do you get around that? Or how do you facilitate uh, performing that service? I think that's a great question. Judy, do you have a response to that? I don't want to put you on the spot. You're muted though. Yeah, we do. There no. you go. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, we do, Laura. Yeah, we want to put you on the spot. Yeah, we do. The person who owns the document does not have to be there. You do not have to be there. Um, you right. can send the documents up by messenger, by FedEx. There are many ways that you can send your documents up. But the person who owns the apostille is using you, as Laura used the word, the facilitator, to get this done for them. Because most, many, most of the time, they don't know how to do it. And they don't want to know how to do it. They just want you to do it. So it's something that um, you have to find a way. And as I tell people, if you live five footsteps from the courthouse, and you go do it yourself. You take your apostilles and you, you know, walk and you, you just, if you, like me, I'm three and a half hours away from our Secretary of State. So I have a messenger who goes back and forth. Um, everyone has to, these are things that you find out in the beginning how they're going to work for you. But your person who owns it does not have to be there. Thank you very much for that. Great question, Tamika. And Judy, I'm just going to offer something to you real quick, too. I'm going to put you back on mute, but it, it appears that your microphone is not, is maybe the computer microphone. It's not the right microphone. So it's really yeah. difficult to hear. So I'll put you on mute and maybe we can get that fixed. Yeah, okay. I All right. Thank you, Tamika. Great question. Gloria Crowell, thank you so much for being here. You want to unmute, tell us what state you're in and how we can help. There we go much for taking my question. I'm here with my son, Clayton. Hello. Um, I am a loan signing agent here in California. Clayton is getting ready to move to the state of Georgia to become a loan signing agent, which we know is an attorney state. And I'm um, looking for uh, guidance from any of you as to how best to proceed forward in becoming a loan signing agent in the state of Georgia um, and, and what steps to take. He's got the notary handbook from Georgia, but I'm just looking for some upper level um, guidance. Yeah, no problem. I think, Carol, would you like to unmute and kind of share your perspective on this as well? Um, oh, you're muted again. Okay, I'm unmuted now. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have a lot of st uh, students and graduates in Georgia and they're doing really, really well. It is an attorney state. So what is your son's name? Clayton. Clayton, okay, hi Clayton. Uh, yeah, when you, when you get there, be aware of one thing that that is an attorney state. And what that means is that there has to be an attorney involved in any real estate transactions that take place for property within the state of Georgia. However, you can handle all uh, transactions, real estate transactions for properties that are located outside of Georgia. And with the way that people are transient all the time, uh, now, I mean, all over the country constantly, there's a lot of work there because you can handle, if people move there from other states, and they're refinancing or selling their property, uh, you can handle those, those transactions. You can also get in contact with attorneys there because <clears throat> oftentimes these attorneys don't wanna go to appointments. They don't wanna notarize documents. Okay, really they make money. their money preparing um, and working okay, with the customers the and they hire other notaries to do that kind of work. So that's what I would suggest. Okay. That's, that's really good information. Thank you so much. For example, here in California, I might work with a, a loan signing company to get leads on jobs for refinances, purchases, sales, etc. Is there similar platforms in the state of Georgia that attorneys are looking to work with notaries? 
uh, I, you just have to do it individually to my knowledge from talking to my graduates there. I just tell them, you know, just look, reach out for people that are in your area, attorneys that you can work with. And some have been very successful doing that. Other, others have just been successful without the attorneys and doing out of state transactions. What about um, contacting or title companies? So and in Georgia, it'll be, it'll be the- well, First uh, of all, oh, I'm sorry, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna just clarify. So uh, in Georgia, they use closing attorneys instead of escrow title companies. So oh, the closing oh, yeah. attorneys right. would serve that purpose. And a lot of the uh, transactions actually come through the same platforms that they do in all the other states. So a lot of times the, um, the methodology to get appointments is the same. You know, you sign up for maybe more signing companies than you would in California because uh, the qualifications for doing the appointments are a little bit different. So you got to increase them. Carol, Carol, I'm sorry. We got a lot of, uh, we can hear people talking in the background, Carol. Thank you. So can I mute you out, Carol? Oh, Barbara. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. No Barbara's problem. on the phone. <laughs> we were sharing in the office area. Yep, no problem. And um, I mute myself. Gloria, um, I also just wanted to follow up too. I think that um, it would be really important for you, for, uh, you guys to get dialed in to the uh, notary community in Georgia ahead of time. And Samantha Smith of the Georgia Notary Network uh, is probably one of the best um, connections out there. She's really growing that um, network out there. I posted her LinkedIn in the chat window. And there's actually okay. several others that are, are kind of growing and emerging too, because there's this huge need. There's, it's so unclear. And you know how, uh, well, shoot, six years ago, the notary community, we, everybody kept information really close to the vest. That has changed a lot over the last few years, but there's still a lot of people who think differently. And there's these new emerging influencers that are bringing people together and sharing information. So I would get dialed in ahead of time, find out exactly what you're stepping into. Just know that no matter what, there's always a way to succeed. It might be at multiple streams of revenue, might be other services that you provide, but there's going to be a way. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks for being here. All right. Um, Mobile NSA. Thanks for being here. You want to unmute and tell us your real name and what state you're in. Hello. Yes, I'm Beth McCauley from Orange County, California. I graduated notary to pro um, and just finished the notary stars boot camp. Um, my question is, are there, sir, other than the main printer and I guess the big scanner, are there other electronic devices that you recommend to make the job easier? Like if you have to photocopy the driver's license, but more importantly, when you're applying to signing agencies, I keep seeing they're asking for social security numbers. So is there a way, some sort of like one document you could send to all with your require, with your history of everything? Or do you have like a device that blocks out your personal information because you're sending to a, you know a lot of signing agencies so how do you protect yourself and how do you make a copy of the driver's license when you're at your signing um do you yeah. use your phone okay i'm going to answer that bill yeah please do carol okay uh in our library in the graduates website all those videos i did one called ein it tells you exactly how to get an EIN number and that will uh, hide your social security number. Don't ever expose that to anyone. Don't put it on applications. You can go to this, the link that I give you. It's the uh, uh, IRS and I mean the, um, yeah, Internal Revenue Service and it will uh, allow you to get that for free and it, they give it to you almost immediately. Yeah, and is that like a tax ID number or it's no? a tax ID number is exactly what it is. So you contact the IRS, it'll be on your website and I'll look as a graduate. It's, it's then, in the light. Yeah, it's in the library. Uh, you'll, you'll find it there. As far as the equipment, I'm going to let somebody else talk about that. 
yeah, like any pointers of any small equipment that you would like take with you or, you know, if you're making, do you make a photo of the driver's license? Is there a need for it? And, you know, and even the best, now maybe the best scanner on the market now too. I see you have your big printer that prints 45 pages a minute, but then also you need a separate big scanner, correct? To scan your docs back. Is that correct? So that might be. So there's a couple things happening here. Number one, um, we should avoid taking photos of IDs if at all possible. We want the uh, borrowers to assume responsibility for that. Most people can print or uh, make copies at home. So we want them to take on that responsibility so you can include that with the um, copies or the, the re when you return it to the lender. Sometimes there's secure portals where the borrower can securely upload that on their own. We would want to take pictures of absolute very last resort. And I know there's notaries that just flat out just say, nope, I can't do that because we never want to transmit that information. That Once we start transmitting or sending things, then we become responsible for uh, hacking or if we start storing that information, we have liability there. So we, we try to avoid that. Now, Scanning documents, yes. Um, if you're gonna be working with signing companies, a scanner these days seems to be pretty imperative. There's all kinds of different scanners. Uh, I have some suggestions on YouTube. I know we have a bunch that can um, type into the chat window, the Adobe scan. You can have the Fujitsu scan snap. I used to use that as my portal portable. It was great if you only had 15 to 20 pages, but as you know, most of these loan signing packages are significantly bigger than that. Uh, the Epson 500 is the one that a lot of people have been requesting on my Facebook page and Instagram. Uh, so I've been giving away quite a few of those over the past year. Um, personally, I use the uh, Brother uh, ADS uh, 2000 series. I think they're up to 2,500 now though. Uh, and I really enjoy that too. So those would be some suggestions there. Laura, do you have any other tech uh, suggestions for people or did you step away? She may have just stepped away. Oops, me? Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to click around here. Um, I didn't want to contribute to the noise. So uh, suggestions about other equipment? Yeah. yeah, you know, just basic, you know, your basic stuff that, you know, pointers that will make your life easier, whether you're doing notary or loan signing. Yeah. I, you, know. you know, I keep it simple. You know, I have, uh, you know, a basic laser printer at home and a scanner at home. I have a scanner on my phone. Uh, and uh, like Bill, I heard Bill say, uh, I try to make sure I'm not the one taking a picture. As a matter of fact, I am a notary that says I won't do it. To my bottom line, I'm not putting it in my phone. If you want to email it to me, I'll print it for you, but I'm not putting your, your photo. I'm not taking a photo of your ID at all. And I tell my signing companies when I see those instructions, I reply to my confirmations that the borrower will need to provide that. I will not take a picture uh, with my phone. But I, don't, I can't think of really any other uh, technical uh, you know, or, or equipment things other than I have a fabulous, it's a little bigger than a big pen with a, a square, uh, probably one inch wide, and it's a flashlight using LED, because I've been in some people's homes where I don't have enough lighting that I can see the numbers on their ID. So I whip that out of my notary bag and turn it on and lay it on the table and it shines right on the ID for me so I can write down the numbers. I love, people love that, they see it. Like, what the heck is that? Uh, and it's fabulous. I do love that. Awesome. And your applications that you're signing for signing agents, everyone is different. There's not a one standardized form that you can just send to all these signing companies that you are applying to. Is that correct? I don't use a standardized form uh, for the, uh, and I haven't had to do this in a long time because I'm not taking on new signing companies. I work with the ones that have been, I've been working with for many, many years. But for, the, for those ones I've worked with, they have usually a, a, a setup that says fill out this on their portal, or I have the PDFs and I send an email and I say, here's this, 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 and this, and I send it off. I mean, it's pretty easy. Yeah. So Beth, the uh, signing up for these signing companies is probably the most tedious, in, yeah. in my opinion, because I can't handle tedious, the worst part of this whole gig. 
but it is so worth it. Uh, if you invest the time to get in, figure out what their requirements are. Some of them are just send us an email and you're in. And some of us are, here's a 22 page application to fill out. You just got to go through that, but it does pay off. And we recommend a hundred to 150 companies in some States. It might be more in some States. It might be less. Keep in mind that we're not making that recommendation because you're going to end up working with 150 different companies. You're just going to, it might take that much time or those many people to figure out who you love working with and who loves working with you and who has enough volume to support you. Um, there are more than likely you're going to find four to seven companies that you just love working with. They appreciate you and you just, that's, they have enough volume to support you, but it takes a long time to, or it takes a lot to figure that out. It's not just like, oh yeah, the five-star companies are the only ones to sign up with because you might just not enjoy working with them. There was a lot that I did not enjoy working with because they make you jump through hoops. They're micromanagers, some of them. That wasn't a good fit for me. So I like some of the three-star companies that take a little longer to pay, but I'm okay with that because we drive right. You just got to figure that out. So it's totally worth it to, to go through that process. Sign up for all of them and then you determine based on your conversations with them. Exactly. And do it once, take the time, and then you're done. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate your help. You're welcome, Beth. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the industry. Kimberly, Nunnally, always a pleasure to see you. How's it going today? What state are you in and how can we help? Uh, yes, it's nice to be here. I am in Georgia and I have taken Laura's um, present um, um, classes or whatever. And I keep going back and forth about the apostille. So my question is, if I have a document, like someone presents something, at first I was thinking I'd just go to my local secretary of state. But am I to understand, like, if they have a document, it's from the state of New York, then I have to get their documents and mail it to New York, or if it's something need to be verified, it would go to California, or I'm facilitating wherever it is within the United States. Is that how that works? That's a great question, uh, Laura or Judy. Oh, yes, Judy, do you want to answer? Otherwise, I'm going to, the short answer is yes. For different, oh, okay. different states, it's not just my Sacramento secretary of state that I work with. And if you're dealing with federal documents, then you're not even dealing with the state level, you're dealing with the federal level. And there's a, a specific, uh, in Washington, a specific address that has to go to for uh, federal documents, okay. which we don't notarize. That would be an example of something we wouldn't notarize. It would just, we just facilitate it. So I, mean, I would need to create a list of all these different locations is one more question. And then what happens if their documents get lost? That was my other concern. If would it, could it, I mean, it could get lost in the mail. I would be responsible for their documents, correct? Well, I, I think um, what Jeannie was saying is that she uses a messenger. Um, I use uh, FedEx with tracking. Uh, Judy, do you want to address the question about the potential loss of documents in transit? She's trying to unmute herself. Oh, okay, good. I can't no, see her. Um, I do use a messenger. Um, if you're going to use FedEx and you're going to use UPS, it is extremely important that you check the internet to find out whether that specific Secretary of State accepts UPS and FedEx. Because like in Pennsylvania, I will tell you, I can send them up by FedEx, but they will only return them UPS. So if I, if I send them a FedEx label to come back, they're not going to do it. So your documents can lay up there for, uh, and the other thing that I wanted to address Kimberly is it's always where the document originated. Right. So for example, um, if somebody comes to my office right now and I'm in Pennsylvania and they say like, I have five birth certificates and all my kids were born in California then I have to offer still those documents in California. It's always origination. So as an apostille agent, you'll find if you're located somewhere, a lot of your business is gonna be from where you're located. But you also have people that come to you. And in our course, um, we teach these processes that you know, you're gonna have people come to you. Um, and then there are the, the Hague and the non-Hague countries. Um, they come to you and you're going to have to be the expert and the one who tells them how to do this because they 
they can, if they want to, go on the internet, figure out how to do it themselves, and go ahead and do it. But I will say, most of them that do that then come back and say, I should have never done that on my own because I didn't have the right form and I didn't have the right check. And uh, I, I got to tell you one quick funny thing. I sent a $2.50 check to Chicago for something and they only wanted $2. But it cost me $40 in shipping because they sent it back to me and they didn't want my check for $2.50. They only wanted two dollars so then i had to send it back to them again um and so i i i always uh, encourage people check it out check out do they accept fedex or not do they will they send it back or not what's their fee what's their fee for expediting and it's all on the internet and you will you can find it it's all on the internet Nothing is very hard to, to find, but um, but you just have to be aware of the various processes. And um, in our in our class, um, you know that's what we teach you. We teach you how you're going to learn to do this and that and this and that. So, um, yep. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you, Judy. And I think just like with anything else that you're learning, you're going to stumble around a little bit, yeah. and it might take a little more time to research and figure things out on the front end. So. You might be thinking, oh man, I'm doing all this work and it's cost me 18 hours of research. But just think the next time right. somebody comes for an apostille in that state, you've got all that information right at your fingertips and you're ready to go. So you're really laying the foundation for a business and a, a revenue stream that will last you as long as you want it to. People are always going to need apostille. It's oh, that, okay. no matter what. It's not tied to the housing market. It's tied to international Yeah, free. Yeah. Uh, let me just add, Bill, that um, for those who are interested and you just want to poke your toe in it, you don't have to be the expert. Um, there are people like Judy, Nas, who they are the experts. And so that's what I do. I don't mind sharing the business. So I take a facilitator's cut and I get it over to her and she knows everything and says, Laura, this is what needs to happen. So I don't have to rely on myself to be doing all that research because apostille business is what they do. It's, it's just a piece of what I do. So I don't wanna spend my time doing that. And so I leverage the expertise of other people who are more knowledgeable than I am and let them make a little money too. Love that. So it's a good way to start, to just poke your toe in. Yeah. All right. Great question. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Landis, great to see you on here. You want to unmute, tell everybody where you're from and how we can help. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm in Florida. I'm in Fort Myers, to be exact. And I normally, you know, stay back. And But on this one, I will say that I got my first apostille about three three or four weeks ago. So after however many people have inquired um, over the years since I've been a notary, um, finally had one that materialized and it was great. What I want to say though, is that where I am, I'm five hours away from our secretary of state and relationships is everything because one of the contacts I made when I first started out, who's in Miami, he actually specializes in apostille work. And he told me, he said, if you ever have anybody inquire, I have someone in Tallahassee who can walk those papers in, in there for you. So he came through. And so that's kind of like the partnership. I think that Laura was speaking. She may be close. I think she's closer to the, to the Secretary of State more so than I am. But it was great to see finally something come through just because a lot, especially now that COVID is in place, if something I found that if something right now, I think our secretary of state's processing times, they're processing, they may be like on December 22nd or 23rd. So um, it's an advantage when you can offer that service of someone being able to walk in um, to yes. you know, walk those documents in to the office. Um, and yes, our secretary of state, I think is closed but the way it's set up is they will have someone come out to the car and meet you and take care of it and then bring it back out to you. 
I have a friend who I'm actually, I don't know if anyone can help me on the call. I'm trying to make this quick, but I have a friend who actually just reached out to me. She's currently living in Korea and she needs to obtain her work um, visa and she needs something notarized and obviously apostilled and then something that has to come through. And I'm not sure how to handle it. Unfortunately, I called the secretary of state and they are not, I don't know what's going on with their phone systems, but they, they're experiencing high volume calls. And my question is what she needs to obtain is she has a certified copy of her business license and she wants to put that in her package to um, uh, Korea for proof of employment, essentially. Now, if something like that has already come through, it's, it's a certified copy through the state of Florida would they still have to apostille that or will that certified copy suffice or or is that a question she has to put back to korea if anyone knows that answer i can help on this oh matt and judy it looks like matt what's up i just had this happen recently to me for it was a birth certificate and that is already a copy of the original because no one has the original except for the vital records office. Okay. So the answer, to answer your question, yes, that certified copy can be apostilled, but they okay. are certifying the signature of the clerk that signed that certified copy. Does that make sense? Yes, that's kind of what I suspected, but I just wanted to make sure that was what should be done. Thank you. Awesome. But, but no, it was great to finally have one fall, you know, <laughs> to yeah. go through the entire process and to actually see the seal and everything. I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool, you know? <laughs> yeah, awesome. Judy has uh, something to add in on that too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. A little bit, you gotta talk really loud though, Judy. I'm coming up closer, okay. I just want you to know that we have a course that's called Tell Me More and we are giving it once a month and it's only a half hour and it's a very very minimal fee and um it is for people who say you know what i might like this business and i might not but i'd like to hear a little more about it so we give the parameters of the business we talk about you know we kind of give a, a syllabus of what the business is about and um and i tell them um, i want you to let me know um, I really loved your course, but that's not for me. I wouldn't like it at all. Or I really liked your course and I want to sign up and take the mix. So there is this course available now for people who just think this might be intriguing, but don't know if it's really for them. And if, um, if anybody's interested, you can look on my website and sign up for it. And, um, and it'll only cost you 20 minutes to a half hour of your time. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Judy. And I'm going to post the uh, link to your website in the chat window again. We've got some background noise, guys, and I can't tell if it's coming from Judy or if it's coming from, I think it might be coming from Judy. Judy, I'm going to just mute you, mute you out there. And I've got the link in the uh, chat window for you. We only have uh, time for one more question. And it looks like Kristen Kristen, was this you in the very beginning that I skipped over? Yeah, I'm sorry. If I put you on hold because I, I no problem. Took a call, so I apologize. Um, I I was going to ask about the training, but it sounds like um, it was answered already by Laura. I was wondering about the difference between Laura's training and her training. So it sounds like Laura is with the facilitating type type of situation, and whereas Judy's is um, more full skill, right? Yeah, I well, think that would no, be a mine isn't exactly just facilitating. I, I, I go about an hour and a half into educating you about what apostilles are and different types of requirements, different kinds of documents, how, how sometimes it's notarization involved, sometimes it's not, but I'm not teaching you to be an agent. And okay. Judy goes the next, uh, she goes the next step. Uh, that, that I don't do. I, I share everything that I know and that I've researched but I don't do it all the time. So she's got a better background, a more varied background than I have and probably has a, uh, well, she does because I've done it myself, a uh, more detailed course. Yeah, I, I would assume that it would probably be a good place to start on yours rather than hers because, you know, I'm not even- um, Well, mine will introduce you. 
And then if you want to do more, then I would suggest yeah. that you take that next step with Judy. And the other thing that Judy was just saying is she offers uh, a small like intro conversation. So for a very small fee, I think she was saying it's somewhere around seven bucks or so. Uh, you oh. participate and they do like a Q&A and you can talk, she'll talk you through it and you'll get a, a, a chance to uh, dip your foot in more than a toe, but not quite your whole body and kind of figure out and see, <laughs> is this for me? Am I interested in going more or is that too much for me? So uh, that's uh, the details are on her website as well as her contact info. Guys, that brings us right up to the hour. So I want to be respectful of your time. Judy Lawrence, thank you so much for making time and uh, delivering that presentation to us on Apostille. We really appreciate your time. Carol Ray, thank you so much for being here as usual. And Laura Buer, <laughs> thank you so much for being here as well. Love you guys. Love everyone who is here on the Tuesday, growing yourself and your business. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye-bye. Bye, Carol. Bye. <laughs>